Ade Dui Dembala. Give me the power I beg of you. 20 years? Mortis Melodivacor de Mervo say. Child's play three, child's play one. Andale pour de boisse Dembala! Fuck. I've been doing this shit for 20 goddamn years. Chucky is such a professional. Babe, how about a smoke and a spritzer over here? A visionary, really. An absolute genius. I'm, um... Glenn. Or, or Glenda. He is a genius. Uh, yep. Okay. Ready? The original impetus for creating the, the movie, the first movie, Child's Play, this was back in the mid-80s. I was in college, and I, you know, I was a lifelong horror fan, so I already had that mindset anyway. So once Cabbage Patch Dolls became popular, I sort of put these ideas together. Hi, I'm Tommy, and I'm your friend to the end. The first movie, if you remember, I mean, had this kind of, of paradistic, uh, look at that entire world, a world that, that calls children consumer trainees. A good guy. Which I found just like very cynical in a wonderful way, and I just thought somehow exploiting that would, would be very interesting for a horror movie. I hate kids. I had seen movies and TV shows that featured the killer doll idea. It wasn't new, but one thing I realized had never been done before was no one had ever treated the doll as a full-fledged character who had a, a character arc and dialogue scenes. Nothing like a strangulation to get the circulation going. Don is an incredibly creative guy, a very funny guy. He truly bathes in, in the blood of, of horror movies. Don had the foresight to really see uh, Child's Play and the character of Chucky as a franchise. In fact, if it was a movie, it would take three or four sequels just to do it justice. Yeah, I think he always knew that there was a bigger world to Chucky than just your typical monster movie. And here he has evolved from you know, a serial killer to a, a fine family man. Nobody makes Swedish meatballs like you, babe. Peachy. Thanks, honey bun. These films have really evolved from being a really frightening first film to moving much more into the area of being horror comedies and not taking ourselves really seriously. I mean, it's, it's, it's a doll. <laughs> yeah, Chucky is like in the top, top killer four. Like Jason, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger. I mean, people in the hood respect him. I know in my hood, everybody know Chucky. Everybody in the gutto know Chucky. Chucky is gay, he's hard. He's, he be killing motherfuckers hard. I'm a big fan of Chucky, I think he's, better than Jason, he's better than all of them, than Freddy, better than Norman Bates. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He has the most style to me of all, and, and I love him, and now he's multiplying, which is even better. But something began to evolve, and that was what Brad Dourif did with Chucky's personality based on Don's words, was to bring out this kind of know-it-all, arrogant little guy. We have a problem with killing. I don't have a problem with killing. And it just seemed to me more interesting and at the same time kind of funny, the idea of, of imagining what this little two-foot killer doll actually thought about. What made him vulnerable? What kept him up at night? The Bride of Chucky is the last one. That was, what, that was when the Tiffany doll was uh, introduced. This is Tiffany. I believe we've already met, haven't we, sweet face? That last movie was, it was hard. It was gangster. It kept Chucky in his form, killing and whatever. In that movie, I structured in such a way that their relationship, relationship between Chucky and Tiffany, went through all of the usual stages of a romantic relationship. They courted, they went on a date, they had sex, they got married, they fought, and they killed each other. <laughs> all of the standard stages. It was a big decision with Bride of Chucky to um, really embrace the humor. I mean, there's a certain absurdity that's built into the Child's Play franchise anyway. So kind of approach it with a humorous angle and then keep them a little off balance so we can really push the humor and the horror to give our audience exactly what they're looking for. Life sure is full of surprises. <laughs> Oh, 
In Seed, we wanted to really take everything that much further. Yo, Red Man here. Back in effect again, y'all. Brick City in the house. I'm on the scene of Seed of Chucky. We out here in Romania. So, you know, hey, when it was the opportunity knocked on my door for Chucky, I was like, I am there. You know, I go down in history for being on the Chucky movie. That's what's up. <laughs> the idea of being cut, as he called it, by Chucky or Tiffany was a badge of, of honor for him. Okay. Well, you know, at the end of Chucky and Tiffany, they were both dead, but we know in successful horror movie franchises, the villains never actually die. But it looked pretty dire for our heroes because Tiffany had been burned to a crisp, and I think Chucky had been stabbed to death, shot. He'd been shot. Go ahead and shoot. I'll be back. I always come back. Yay. But dying is such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> If a character's been around long enough, people start to have affection towards him. So in the beginning, he was just this horrifying little gremlin. And now people are kind of, they relate to him. It just seemed natural that we would now evolve into a, a, a domestic drama. So whereas the last one was a parody of romantic comedies, this one is a parody of domestic dramas like Ordinary People and Kramer vs. Kramer. Ay, 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 ay. Don felt strongly that it would be great to explore further the family uh, dynamics of including this, this child. What the hell is this? We had an agreement, Chucky. We decided for the sake of our child, we weren't gonna do this shit anymore. No, you decided. I enjoy the self-referential kind of horror movies and comedies, but this was sort of took it all one step further. I don't know, it's sort of spoofing on top of spoofing. You can catch that movie in theaters next Halloween. Thank you, Chucky. Fuck you very much. Yeah, it's definitely self-referential, but I, I hope different from other self-referential horror movies in that I think we're, rather than being precious, I like to believe that we're completely irreverent about ourselves. I mean, Jennifer completely mocks herself in this movie in a way that I think people will love her for. How come I don't ever get any of the good roles anymore? How come nobody takes me seriously? Nice tits. Thank you. They may be over the top, but we relate to them. You, you relate to each of these characters and kind of love them in, in a weird, bizarre way. And then I think now with the child, with Glenn, I think that there's so many more possibilities. He already came up with an idea for Chucky number six. I don't want to give anything away, but it's fabulous. Whoa! <gasps> well, well, well. Yeah, too bad, too bad I got killed in it because I would have loved to come back for the next sequel of Chucky, you know? Oh, I think there'll be a Chucky 6, 7. I think one should be a musical. I think they were talking about Chucky goes to Hawaii. It could be around the world with Chucky. Chucky fights Jason and Freddy and, and then Gorgo and, you know, all of them. The Hulk could keep going until he took over the world. It was the end of the world and, and it was only Chucky. And I'll pay to see every one of them right to the end. Yes, probably yes. Yes. How was I supposed to know that people would buy into the whole killer doll concept? No, wait. Can I change my answer? The passion, the intensity. Slice, 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 slice. And that wasn't even scripted. I'm going to say no. Well, I'm a genius. You have to understand that. What was the question again? I watched the Chuckies. I watched one, two, three, and four back in the day. And I used to be like, how in the fuck are they doing that with that dog? Because that dog scared the shit out of me. Well, one thing, if you're successful in, in bringing these guys to life, is nobody will have a clue as to how many people are involved. I mean, when we go on set and there's an army of seven people carrying the puppet in, and then it takes 15 of us to set it up, rig it, and perform it, they realized there's a lot more involved than just bring the doll to set and let's shoot a scene. Obviously we start with a script that we all think is great and funny and, um, and after we cast and we bring in our doll performers um, and in this case uh, it's Jennifer Tilly voicing the character of Tiffany. These bodies are 
okay, but they're like apartments. We're just renting. And Brad Dourif, as always, voicing the character of Chucky. What is this shit? And then uh, the new addition would be Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, who was a fantastic addition to the movie, and he's voicing the new character of Glenn. Yeah, Dad, it'll be fun. And now he has Chucky to add to his resume. I'm sort of playing two characters, really. I'm playing Glenn, who is also Glenda. Who the hell are you? Shitface. You know, what kind of a name is that? As far as Glenn goes, Don really wanted something really haunted. He wanted more of an angular face. I think we had seven or eight different sculptures of what Glenn could look like, still following the parameters that we were given, but kind of seeing how far we could push it in a couple different directions. Then we would take that design and play with hair color, hair length, eye color, pupil size, teeth, eyebrows, no eyebrows, you name it. It all goes in along with the sense of the body and the colors of the wardrobe. And then you get into these bizarre questions. Well, let's see, should Glenn stuff a bra or would Glenn just wear mom's dress? Oh, shit. Glenn has to have this sort of innocence. But then, you know, he's son of Chucky, so, you know, he has to have so, sort of that, that gene pool as well. Just bringing the characters to life is a, a, a complicated task involving br the art of breaking down character and emotion into very specific gestures, hand gestures, raise of an eyebrow, flicker of an eye. The computer system for performance for these puppets is actually something that hasn't been done before. They program the voices into the dolls, and then they create the performances and match the lip sync. Then, as far as the puppets go, I mean, that's a pretty complicated process in its own. What am I supposed to do with this? I like that. Someone's off with a blink. The entire shot is off. We can actually even slow it down, so you can listen to it slowly and get the articulation of the lips, you know. Oh my God. And uh, so we recorded that, so it's now in the computer. Glenda, honey, everything's okay. It was just a little slip. You're just gonna think of the three dolls that you see on screen being three dolls. But every character has two neutral heads, one screaming head. Those are fully mechanical functioning heads, several pairs of arms from mechanically dexterous hands to positionable rod puppet hands to poseable arms. Um, multiple bodies, positionable, floppy, stunt, uh, rod puppeted bodies, mechanical bodies, and all this goes into bringing that one character to life. What am I supposed to do with this? There's a huge army just to build the stuff and get it here, and then there's a huge army here to maintain it, rehearse it, and then perform it on set. And you, you should be ashamed of yourself. Where's your self-respect? The puppet takes about seven to eight puppeteers a piece just to operate them. So it's one person on the eyes, one person on the eyebrows, one person on the hands, one person on the arms, one person on the legs, one person on the mouth, and they are actually making the Chucky doll, the Tiffany doll, and the Glenn doll come to life and make it look real in the movie. <laughs> um, Tiffany has almost as big of an entourage as, as Chucky. You count how important the character is by how many puppeteers are crawling along the floor when you're acting with the puppet. Chucky had a bigger entourage than any star I've ever worked with. How many people are working him and how complicated it is. It takes five grown adult men to jerk off one small plastic puppet. So we're knocking on the shoulder. Action. Very unlucky. Yeah. That was great. That was great. <laughs> I'm masturbating midget. <laughs> that made me so happy I was in show business. They all have tons of cables, miles of stuff coming out their rear ends to all these controllers. It's like no matter how well we were able to pack everything in for the head and get all the functions improved in the head and the mouth shapes, uh, we're still cable controlled in regards to 
the arms, the legs, the torso, and all that. All the floors are actually all designed to be um, really beautiful visually, but also you'll see a lot of square tiles in there, and that's so we can pop out those tiles and give the puppeteers space to actually put their equipment sort of through a small space that we can then cover up, and it really helps sell the dolls. The puppeteers is doing a great job. They got to go under the floor, looking up. They got to be scooched down on their knees all the time, dressing her up, making sure her moves is right. So I know they back be hurting like a motherfucker at the end of the day. So, you know, big up to the puppeteers. Okay, someone uh, stabilize the body, please. Because she's balanced on her heels, we're going to need to have someone underneath there just making sure she, that she's secure. Because it's easy to make it move, but it's, it's really hard to make it be a specific character and do a specific performance. It's easy to go from A to B, but what's the attitude and, and who is it? And then take that concept and say, okay, you seven people need to each think in tandem as this one character. Four. Uh, speed. Mark. And action. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. Thank you. Okay, let's print that and go again. And that's sort of the, the thrill, and that's sort of the, you know, the, the big hurdle at the same time. Um, by the way, this can I have your autograph? I'm a big fan. <laughs> it's just really bizarre to be looking at a little tiny doll with her little eyes blinking, going, Miss Tilly, you can do it the easy way, or the hard way. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> No wonder her career's in trouble. I'm working on Tiffany's glamorous arms. I'm working on Tiffany's body. And I'm working on Tiffany's head. Now, I realize there's been some controversy about whether a child is a girl or a boy, but really, nowadays, who cares? I'm controlling Tiffany's eyes. I'm running Tiffany's lip sync. I'm working on Glenn's body. I'm working on Glenn's arms. Seed of Chucky is an innovative new installment to a timeless horror serial, seri series. And I'm doing Tiffany's eyebrows. And I'm doing Tiffany's fingers. <gasps> Ooh, that's pretty nail polish. I'm doing Chucky's brows. And I'm doing Chucky's eyes. I'm doing Chucky's arms. What gives? Are we through here yet? I'm running lip sync for Chucky and Glenn. Series. C series. What? Hi, I'm Tony, and I control the puppeteers with this. I'll kill every last one of you! <laughs> kidding, just kidding. Kids love it when I do that. Thank <laughs> you.